Hey there once again YouTube, it's Ben Ferriolo, I'm back once again. Uh, to start off real quick, I just want to let you guys know that I have discontinued my monthly Volcano video updates. However, but, and it's a big but, um, I am going to start doing monthly Volcano updates for those same Volcanoes, but on my website as a blog post. It's basically going to contain only um, reported seismicity. I have nothing up yet because I have not done the June update yet. It'll be up probably in a few days or so. This will deal only with seismicity and reported seismicity, of course. But if you want to see deformation, go to the more drop down menu and click deformation updates for either Yellowstone or Long Valley. Those will be done about every two months. So my monthly updates will, of course, occur every month on this page on my website here. But the deformation updates will occur about every two months or so. Of course, unless deformation starts increasing or we see some type of uplift episode occurring again. I'll probably do it every month or every few weeks if that happens. But the deformation updates will be put out with deformation plots mainly focused on uplift or subsidence for Yellowstone Caldera and Long Valley Caldera about every two months or so. Maybe even a little less than that. But So just keep an eye out on these two pages every month or so. And let's move on to the USGS Earthquake website. Okay, so let's see here. All right, let's zoom in. Oh, first off, sorry guys, I'm getting a little sidetracked here. We are at volcanodiscovery.com slash volcano. I will leave a link to this in the description box below. It's a great resource for recent volcanic activity. Uh, Stromboli, actually, in Italy, they're having a good amount of eruptions, guys. Some pretty tall lava bursts. Um... I guess they can be called lava fountains, but usually lava fountains last longer than a few seconds. Just these large, explosive lava eruptions are occurring at Stromboli right now. And Stromboli is always active, kind of like Mount Etna. It's in Italy. But moving on, Samankaya had an eruption of 24,000 feet today. And also Popo Catapet uh how do you say it? Popo Catapetal or Popo Catapetal? I'm pretty sure it's Popo Catapetal which is a large stratovolcano next to Mexico City in Mexico. Yeah, it'd be very bad if it had a major eruption, and I do believe a major eruption is approaching. It's been active for a long, long time, guys, but just in the past few years, it seems like eruptions have been increasing in frequency, and in my opinion, it's just my opinion, just saying, I think it is following somewhat of the same pattern that Anak Krakatau did, right before it's called Dara forming eruption in late 2018 that killed over a thousand people because of the subsequent tsunami. Now we don't have to worry about a tsunami with Popo Catapetal, but it is very, very close to an extremely high population center. I mean, Mexico City probably has over a million people, probably even more than two million people down there. So it would definitely be catastrophic if it had a major eruption. I hope it doesn't, but I hope they are monitoring this very closely. We had a, an eruption to 26,000 feet today at Popo Catapetal. And then I believe yesterday, or is that earlier today? I believe earlier today it also had an eruption to 22,000 feet. And of course, multiple other eruptions uh, smaller than that. It's just constantly erupting. In my opinion, it seems to be building and building and building. Every single day it gets more active and more active. So we could be seeing a major eruption approaching for Popo Catapetal. Uh, I hope not, but just keep an eye on that. Just remember that I said that just in case. And if you live in Mexico City, please be safe and be prepared just in case. You never know what will happen. You never know. It may calm down, but you never know. <laughs> so, moving on to the USGS earthquake map here. For the big island of Hawaii, we've only seen seven reported earthquakes in the past 24 hours. And in the past seven days of all magnitudes... We have seen a total of 71 reported earthquakes, and a lot of the reported earthquakes aren't shown on the USGS earthquake map. But if you go to volcanoes.usgs.gov and go to either Kilauea or Mauna Loa, they show many more earthquakes are occurring than just 71 in the past seven days. So this is just what USGS is reporting, but just know the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory is reporting many more. And spasmodic tremor was occurring within the mantle plume, as we have seen before, but it has been somewhat quiet. Not much spasmodic tremor in the past few days, past two or three days, I believe, but I believe we will see a resurgence very, very soon. Uplift continues at Mauna Loa, the Kilauea Summit, and along the Kilauea East Rift Zone right here. And you can see the central location of a lot of these earthquakes is on Mauna Loa's southwest flank, right down here. Here, let me turn on terrain real quick. On Mauna Loa's southwest flank, right down here, the southwest rift zone, right where it starts, the upper part of the rift zone right there, uplift is occurring, 
it's not too, too crazy, but it's somewhat substantial. And we are seeing a slight increase in seismicity at the Kilauea Summit, where apparently HVO is saying uplift is starting to occur there as well. And along the East Rift Zone, primarily I believe the Middle East Rift Zone in this location right here, is seeing a good amount of uplift as well. And along with the spasmodic tremor events that seem to have made a resurgence since January of this year, 2019, and has been going off and on, and they occur in swarms, what I like to call spasmodic tremor swarms, because most days they don't really occur singularly. When they do occur, they occur in bunches, which can be, if, if, if earthquakes did that, it'd be considered a swarm, right? Well, magma is definitely coming up from the mantle, guys, and going into all three of these locations, I believe. However, it is my personal opinion, just a theory, again, just my opinion, that Mauna Loa will be the next to see an eruption, I believe. I'm just hoping it won't be Mauna Loa and Kilauea at the same time, or the Kilauea East Rift Zone right down here. Now here we are at pnsn.org slash tremor for the west coast of the United States, and we do see ever since June 9th, 2019 to right now, 7.20 p.m. Pacific Time, June 30th, 2019, we do see ETS pretty much does continue in a somewhat diminished form. Uh, the ETS episode, I believe, was in April and May of this year, just a few months ago. Um, has somewhat calmed down, but you could tell it still is occurring along the Cascadia Subduction Zone, primarily right up here in the border of Northern California and o Southern Oregon, and along the entire section right here of Central Oregon. Not too much in Northern Oregon. Then we see a big space of basically nothing near Olympia and Tacoma, Washington State. Again, I live right there, right in Disaster Central. <laughs> we do see a little bit, and remember the uh, 2001 Nisqually earthquake, I believe, occurred right down here somewhere. Uh, a little bit of ETS occurring right there, tectonic tremor being detected by seismic stations, and a good amount of tectonic tremor occurring on the northeastern tip of the Olympic Peninsula, spreading northeast this way. And there's a little bit of tectonic tremor also being detected along Vancouver Island, zooming out. You can see that tectonic tremor is still ongoing since June 9th, but it has been calming down just a little bit, as you can see. Not too much there, but it's still occurring. Let's go to earthquake map, shall we? So, for Washington State, let's do seven days all magnitudes. Here are all magnitudes of the past seven days for Washington State. Let me turn on grayscale just so you can see them a little bit better. There we go right there. You can see multiple earthquakes occurring just west of Seattle. Primarily 27 kilometers in depth, 19 kilometers in depth. No, nothing too crazy. I don't think any of these were felt at all. You never know though. And we did see a few earthquakes the other day under Mount Rainier. And actually by the Hanford nuclear site. Somewhat. The Hanford nuclear site's actually right there. So it's just due west. We did see a somewhat of an increase in seismicity right there. But let's go to Mount St. Helens, shall we? Check this out. Just in the past week, in the past seven days, Pacific Northwest Seismic Network and USGS is reporting 45 earthquakes in the past seven days alone. That's a good amount, guys. I believe that's higher than last last month's total, like for a whole month. And this is only seven days worth. So we have definitely seen an increase in seismicity in Mount St. Helens, mainly small magnitudes, though. But still, you never know. Let's click largest magnitude first. The largest was a magnitude 1.4 directly under the Mount St. Helens crater at 4.1 kilometers in depth. June 30th, actually, at 1531 UTC. So just in the past 24 hours, we saw one. And let's go newest first. All right, so actually under the summit in the past seven days, we are seeing a total of, if my computer let me get there, 30, just right at the summit. And we so we are definitely seeing an increase in small magnitude seismicity at a, at a moderate depth. You know, it's not too shallow, it's not too deep. But, you know, they are occurring. Now going up to Mount Rainier, if it'll let me. Sorry, guys, got to bear with me. We did see a few earthquakes reported the other day from Mount Rainier. Got two right here along the uh, West Rainier seismic zone, which is this area right here related to tectonic activity. Under here could be related to either magmatic, hydrothermal, or tectonic activity under Mount Rainier. Then we add one just to the south right here. So Mount Rainier isn't seeing too crazy of an increase of seismicity compared to Mount St. Helens, but it is occurring nonetheless. Now, let's go all the way up. Come on, buddy. One day all magnitudes. And with the increase in volcanic activity worldwide recently, I mean, there, just past week or two, there have been some 
pretty big eruptions along the Ring of Fire, going up, one of them, Ulumun, I believe it was the Ulumun volcano in Papua New Guinea, went up to 63,000 feet. I mean, that was an absolutely huge eruption there. And the Manam volcano, I believe, also erupted just a few days after that in Papua New Guinea as well to about 55,000 feet, I believe it was, or 50,000 feet. Might have been 50,000 feet. But going over here just recently, in the past 24 hours, I believe just a few hours ago, actually, we did see a magnitude 4.2 at 3.1 kilometers in depth in eastern Nevada, right on the border of Nevada. And what is that? That's Utah, right? Yeah, that's Utah. Pretty sure we, oh, oh no. Yeah, yeah, that's Utah. My goodness, sorry guys. All right, zooming in. Let's turn on U.S. faults just real quick. Not seeing any mapped faults for this area. Nevada is really mapped well on the USGS earthquake webpage. Uh, the closest fault is the Dry Lake Fault, which is far to the west. So, I mean, this still could be some type of tectonic activity, but the closest known fault is the Dry Lake Fault, and that's what? That's almost... 30 40 kilometers to the west so that's very interesting and this magnitude 4.2 and subsequent aftershocks occurred right in this location near the panica hills just east of lincoln county airport so quick street uh let's go to satellite shall we very deserty region the crust is very thin in a lot of these areas guys so even small little fissures can open and let magma come up. I'm not saying it is volcanic in nature, but I must always put out that possibility since that is what I try to look out for, mostly. And in my opinion, what is this, an old lava flow? No? Maybe. This just might be an old lava flow or something. That looks very intriguing. But we already know Nevada, pretty much the whole state is very volcanic in nature because the crust, again, is pretty thin in that area. So we're going to take the data from the closest seismic station for this magnitude 4.2 at 3.1 kilometers in depth. Let's go to the event page real quick. Come on, buddy. Remember, this area is very sparse in population, so not many people are going to report feeling it compared to if it occurred like in Seattle or Los Angeles, right? But 50 people did report to USGS that they did feel this, and they do have a moment tensor associated with this earthquake right here. So why don't we take the data from the closest seismic station, and let's click origin. Remember, this is whenever you see a reported earthquake from USGS, usually they do show the lists of stations that they use to pick phases, and they usually get the first and the closest seismic station correct. Usually they do. If it'll go. Come on, buddy. So here we are at the origin page at phases. It took literally two minutes for it to load, guys. Something's going on with my internet. I have Xfinity internet, too. I believe the fastest kind they have. It's really not that fast, depending on where you're at. Sorry, guys. I had to put that out there. Click arrival time to see the closest seismic station. Usually, the closest seismic station is the first one listed when you click arrival time. That is PIO in the NN Network Broadband Vertical. Let's take a look at that now in the seismic program swarm. Here we are in the Seismic Program Swarm with the most recent data stream as of 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, June 30th, 2019. From Seismic Station PIO in the NN Network dash dash location code, broadband vertical. Uh, this is supposedly the closest seismic station to this earthquake and subsequent aftershocks that occurred in eastern Nevada, which was reportedly a magnitude 4.2, what was it, I believe at 3.1 kilometers in depth. Here are the waveforms right here, up, uh, blah, 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 excuse me, upwards going P waves showing compression. And let's go to the spectrogram. Again, this is not filtered, even though it's a broadband station. Something I thought was very interesting. Look at the tail end of this earthquake lasts a long time. However, it is a magnitude 4.2 and the coda of an earthquake, which is the end tail of an earthquake, does last pretty long for magnitude 4.2s. Something else to take a note of. First, let's add a frequency filter. Going down, enabled, high pass, 1 hertz to the 8th power, press OK. All right, right here, let's go to the spectra plot. Notice we have dominant frequency starting at 0 0.9 hertz, right at 1 hertz, right at the high pass filtered level, which is strange. Um, so, and then it ends right about 5 hertz, look at that. But we do have, of course, some strong frequencies going well beyond that. But the main power of this earthquake was under 5 hertz. But again, you can see right here, we do have strong frequencies going well beyond that. So it's not really a low frequency earthquake, 
However, look at right here. You can definitely tell there are some very strong low frequencies associated to this earthquake. It is very possible this is a volcanic earthquake. It is very possible. I'm not saying it, it is for sure because I'm not a professional. I cannot really say that for sure. But in my opinion, it definitely looks like one. All right, moving forward. Notice how we see multiple aftershocks. See these little tiny guys? These are all little aftershocks. One right there, one right there, one right there. One was even deep. They reported one at 10.1 kilometers in depth, even though the rest of it wasn't. Now, something interesting to uh, show you. Let's take off the frequency filter just real quick. Now, you're going to notice this. Look at this right here. You see this right, and you can even see it on the helicopter right here. Look at those low, low frequencies. I mean, these are some very low frequencies being shown right here. Let's go to the spectral plot and see exactly how low they are. Yeah, wow, that's very low. 0 0.04 hertz to about 0 0.1 hertz. Wow. Now, I would originally say that is part of the oceanic micro -seisms. Whoops, my bad. Why did I do that? There we go. I would usually say this is part of oceanic micro -seisms. But look at this. It's very strong. Goes up to about 400 amplitude count. But look at the way it's formed. Just, just picture that in your mind. Remember that. Now we're going to go up here and look at some actual oceanic micro since this is a broadband station which can detect those. Notice how they look a little bit different. They look more rounded and a little bit more uniform, right? Well, let's go down here. Doesn't that look much different? Up here and down here. That does look different, doesn't it? I don't know why it's angled like that, but very interesting. So this could just be something wrong with the station, or this actually could be a very low frequency earthquake, which does happen from time to time in locations that last very long, that have some very long waveform periods. I mean, from right here to right here, let's see. 235520 to 235534, what is that, just 14 seconds? That's a long time for waveform spacings, guys. That's a long, long time. So I thought that was very interesting. Just wanted to bring that up to you guys real quick. That something very odd with some very low frequencies did occur. Going forward, we see many, 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 many aftershocks, guys. Many aftershocks. All of them have high range frequencies. All of them. And a lot of them actually seem to have higher dominant frequencies than the original earthquake right here. Which again, had some very strong lower frequencies right in the beginning. Going forward, we still are seeing some aftershocks. Still seeing some aftershocks. Another one right there, multiple aftershocks. Going forward, going forward. As of the most recent data stream, again, as of about 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, we're still seeing a few aftershocks. And looks like it's starting to calm down now. So that's pretty much it for the magnitude 4.2 in Nevada. Let's see if anything else has struck since I started recording. Go back to the earthquakes. Come on, buddy. Quick one day all magnitudes. Doesn't really look like anything much else has occurred since I started recording, but you never know by the time this video up, something might happen. That happens a lot, guys. I'll talk about something, put a video up, and then all of a sudden something happens right when I get the video up, and then I have to do another video. So, again, do not forget to keep an eye out for my monthly volcano updates, which will now be posted on my website under monthly volcano updates and deformation updates as well. That'll probably be out in the next four to five days, but I'm hopefully going to get it out sooner. But I will let you guys know when that's done. Hope you guys all had a great day. Keep an eye on Popo Catapetal in Mexico City, which I believe is approaching a major eruption, at least in my opinion. Keep an eye on all volcanoes worldwide. Mount St. Helens, again, is seeing an increase in seismicity. That'll be very interesting if it sees another dome building eruption. I would love to go travel to Mount St. Helens during a dome building eruption. I've never seen a volcano erupt with my own eyes before, so it's definitely something on my bucket list, guys. Hopefully something I see way before I kick the bucket. So I hope you guys have a wonderful night. God bless, and I'll see you later.